All right, guys. Well, big week, uh, border war. Um, what a great rival game, and uh, very, very excited uh, to be a part of this game. Uh, tremendous respect for Craig Bowl uh, and his program. Uh, what he's done at Wyoming to me has been remarkable. His consistency, his toughness, everything about the way he runs his program, I have a great deal of respect for. And um, we realize that we're going up into a very hostile environment and uh, a very prepared and a very talented football team. Um, you know, they kind of remind, in some respects, remind me of us, um, probably disappointed where their record is. Um, very physical, very tough, very talented, um, and uh, a, a scary team to have to play. Um, but a fun game to play in, and we need to have great preparation for them. Um, you know, uh, up front, they're big up in the offensive line, and. Uh, They've got a couple good tight ends and a bunch of starts on their old line, and you know, uh, so and, and and you know, big quarterback. So uh, they've got ability up on offense, you know, defense. Uh, they've done a really good job. They're 20th in the country in total defense. Not shocking. And uh, third against the pass. Uh, you know, uh, Garrett Crawl, their defensive ends, a really good player, big dude, 48. And Mike. Uh, Chad Muma is an outstanding player, just really, really can run well. He's big, he's fast, he's going to be a pro player. And free safety, uh, Gandy is a hell of a player um, in the box most of the time and a real run defender, very, very athletic. So, uh, you know, Jay Savell, I know Jay, um, you know, from years and years ago. But uh, he's, he's done a great job and uh, they're just, this is a, this is a, a good football program. So, um, We've got to have a great week of practice. Um, you know, we've got, to, we've got some nicks and bangs and bruises that you have this time of the year and just worry about, you know, not being able to practice at the physicality level you need to. Hopefully we'll see where we're at by tomorrow. Hopefully uh, we have some guys healing a little bit here. So that's where we are. I think it's great. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter to me what they think. I mean, I know what he is. He's the best tight end in college football. I mean, I, I already know that. Um, I think it's great. These accolades are always wonderful, you know, and, and, and that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing, but I didn't need them to let me know that he was, the, you know, where he is. I mean, he's, I've seen enough of these guys now. This guy is a unique character. Um, he's, I'm sure there's very good tight ends. I know there are, but. I don't know. Based on what I've seen in my experience, he'd be the best tight end in the country. Speaking of injury concerns for your team, uh, how's the head coach feeling? <laughs> don't worry about the head coach. I don't have to play. I just need to get my big butt toted around and stop limping. But uh, nah, I'm doing better. I just, you know, I'm still limping around a little bit here. But uh, the severity of it has calmed down. Um, hopefully, uh, yeah, I don't see this being any factor for me, being, not being able to not being on the sideline on Saturday, not that my health should matter at all. It's irrelevant. <laughs> so uh, You mentioned that you're going into a hostile environment. You say that like it's a fun thing to do. This is, these are environments that you like when you go on the road. And yeah, football. I mean, yeah, it's a rival game. These make college, this is what college football is all about. It's why it's different than you know, pro football. I know there's some rivals in pro football too, but I don't know. There's something really special about this border war, and, and, and it's just such a – what a great game. So – and, you know, some of the traditions surrounding it, you know, driving up to the border and all that kind of stuff. And I've never been on their campus. I've never even stepped foot in the state of Wyoming. So uh, it'll be great, yeah. I said it's a fun week. It's a good week. And uh, it'll be a heck of a football game, I'm sure. I hope we have a bunch of fans that will travel up there, I hope, because, I mean, it, you know, it's not very far and it, it means so much to the school. You know, we got to keep the boot where it belongs right here. Kind of that vein. I mean, you got to, you know, be in your first boot run last year and now, you know, Yeah, I mean, it was so much different the first time just because of the uh, atmosphere wasn't there. You know, the rivalry still had great intensity to the players. But it was an empty stadium and everything, so um, I'm sure I missed out on a lot of what it really is. Um, you know, we didn't uh, get drive 
up and exchange and it was just everything was different so this has really been my first experience with it so I'm, I'm looking forward to it and uh, you know um, as I said I've never played there I've, I've, I've heard they have a great atmosphere there and I just know as I told our guys we're going into a hornet's nest I mean that's the way I perceive this um, you know they came here last year we were able to win that game and you know so this is going to be a truly inspired game and um, you know we've got a make sure that we have great preparation and we're ready to go on the road. Going on the road is hard enough. Going on the road on rivalry games is even harder. Last year we, you know, we won it here, but there was no, nobody there. So it was no like uh, home field advantage. This year it's going to be tremendous home field advantage. That's another factor in the game for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously we talked after the game about yeah. red zone, uh, you know, not getting touchdowns after watching tape and everything. Mm-hmm. What do you see and were you surprised after the week before having success? Were you surprised a little bit or? Yeah, I mean, I'd say uh, you know I'll talk I'll talk to it and around it just a little bit. You know, um, number one, we didn't run the ball well enough. That's what was different. And in the red zone, you got to be able to run the football. And I think we did not do a good enough job running the football. Period. Last week, and certainly didn't do a good enough job running the football in the red zone. And we didn't stay at it enough. Kind of first down run, second down throw routine. And that's okay, but I, I just feel like we're not, we didn't run the ball well enough throughout the game and therefore did not run the ball well enough in the red zone. And we got behind on down and distance. And I think that that was problematic. So that was, that's, that's first thing from last week. Um, it's very evident to me. And why didn't we run the ball well? We blocked it at times pretty well. I think. We are inconsistent. Um, we have too many MAs, too many mistakes, and we're very inconsistent. We move the ball down the field very, very well. But a lot of times, by the time we get into the red zone, we're into play whatever number that is. Let's make it up and say it's play 12, play 13, play 11, whatever. And as fatigue sets in, we seem to make more and more mistakes. Um, and, and, and when they're at the point of attack, they end up being big mistakes. We had a lot of that. We had we had too much of that last week, and that also leads to your issues. So we're not running the ball well. And then you can go into why aren't we running the ball well, and why didn't we run the ball well in the red zone? And you know, we went the wrong way about four or five times, and and and, and that we just got to focus and concentrate a little bit harder as as you get tired. As simple as that. As you get a little fatigued, sometimes it's harder to bear down. We got to bear down, and I think. And, and, I, and as I told our staff, I think we have to simplify a little bit too. I, I think that, you know, let, let's take some of the mental strain off the plate as we get down into that red zone. Let's not make this rocket science. Not that we are, but, you know, as coaches, sometimes you have these bright ideas and they sound good and they look good on paper, but, you know, they don't, you know, I, I just want to be more bread and butter. I want to be more execution orientated. I want to help our players. I think we, we, that, that's on us. And uh, now we're 100% in red zone scoring. That's a good goal. But you got to get touchdowns. You're giving away four points a series. That's 12. We gave away 12. You know, because we're not scoring, in, I think we're two to three times inside the 10, certainly twice inside there. You know, I mean, you're giving away somewhere between 8 and 12 points. It's, all, it's the margin for error in that game. Now, having said that, you know, I'm a big, like, I like to look at the stats, but I'm really a big momentum guy when it comes to college f- football. I'm sure it's no different at the next level, but momentum's big for me. And, you know, I had to go back and evaluate, like, how do we look so good and in, in, in so on top of it, and then all of a sudden in, in the third quarter? But I really went back and, and watched both sides, obviously graded it, talked to the coaches, went back to myself, watched everything again, special teams, everything. You know, before the half, it was eight minutes before the half, they went on a six-minute drive, 97 yards. Now, we were hitting them, stinging them all over the place. I mean, we were, yeah, we needed to score more touchdowns for sure, but we're just total momentum, total control of the game. Total, and then all of a sudden, there's a 97-play drive for six points. And in that 97-play drive, there was a third and, I want to call it seven, inside our, their own ten. We make that play, we get the ball back with tremendous field position. Instead, it's 97 yards, six minutes later. We get the ball, and I'm boring you with this, but we get the ball, boom, we go right down the field in a two-minute fashion. 
It was under two or just under two. We go down, and uh, we get the damn ball inside the five, I think it was, or damn close to the five. And uh, we end up kicking a field goal. We try a, 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 a you know a, a rollout pass, and uh, anyways, we, we we kick three. We operate the two minute pretty good. We get three, but we don't get seven, but we get three. All right, and and we I thought we operated it well. Go in at half. Still feel damn good about the game, right? But six minute drive before the half, right? Ninety seven yards. The the odds of that happening are three percent chance that's going to happen. Three percent. That means ninety seven percent no. Well, it happened. We come back in the second half. Our, our team's got a great look in their eye. I really love the way our halftime went. We had talked about what we needed to do, blah, 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 blah. Well, we get them six plays and out. Pretty good. Now they pin us inside, not inside, on the one. They pin us on the one. You know, uh, the, the averages of coming out from there are not good. So, and I don't, we didn't handle that well. We, you know, we, we should have been able to get at least one first down. We did not. We punt the ball, they get a good return on us. Okay, they score a touchdown. So now, you know, in basically in two of the f three drives, there's 14 points. 14 points. Okay, we're still winning, I believe. Yeah, because we answer with the field. We're still up 16 14 or whatever. Yeah, 16 14. I'm telling you this for a reason. And we, the next series, we get the ball. And we get it all the way down side to 15. We get the holding call. We come back. We lose 40 something yards on offense which was just horrifying because we should have had points right there, which would have been another response and we would have went up that much further ahead of them, okay? So we, we are responding. Penalty. Okay, it's not good, right? Because, and then we, we drop the kick inside the three. 97 yards. We touch the ball three times in the third quarter and uh, that's not good. To me, that's the game. Two 97 yard drives. Big penalty on the offense doesn't respond to, to, to the points that would have been minimally three points, but hopefully not. But, and we lost, in my opinion, we lost momentum. And the other thing we lost at that point in time was offensively you get out of rhythm. We didn't touch the ball. I mean, you just didn't touch the ball very much. They had the ball 11 minutes in the fourth quarter. So we just looked like, and, and, and we looked like it. <laughs> You start getting in that mode where you're not touching the ball, you go out cold, you're three and out, and it just you just lose your rhythm. We had such rhythm in the half. So, anyways, that's a great story, but what's the solution to it? You know, well the solution is that you know we, we've got to we've got to handle that momentum adversity when it strikes better, and that's a team thing. It's not an offense thing. It's not a defense thing. It's a team thing. We did not play complementary football at that point in time, and. You know, we just we added to it, and, um, and 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 it's a darn shame. So what you've seen is the highs of our ability to fire as a damn good football team, and when you see it, you're like, wow. And then you see the lows of, you know, we're not firing at the same level. So it's there, and obviously it's my job to make sure that we get that consistency factor. And I believe that when you play better teams, and we played a very good football team. Let's not let's not. Let that get away from us. We've played some outstanding defenses this year, not as many outstanding offenses. And I thought that that offense was a damn good offense. And I think when you play good football teams, your margin for error obviously shrinks. Okay? So I say there's too many mistakes. I'd say we need to play better complementary football. I'd say on defense, we had a hard time getting off the field on critical third downs. I'd say on offense, we need to run the ball better, which I believe would have helped us in the red zone. Okay? And I think, you know, that's a game that we should be right in the middle of, which we, obviously we were. But, I mean, we had control of it and we let it go. So I think as we build our program and we keep developing our program, we're going to see less and less of that. Right now we're seeing it good, bad, good, bad. We've got to even that out. And I, I hope that we see the remainder of the season, we see a steady gain, not a roller coaster up-down gain on that. But I think that has a lot to do with – you know, the building of your program, and that comes with confidence and consistency and, you know, and all those things we're talking about and, and, and less roller coaster rides. That's my take, um, and, and that's a lot of conversation we just had, but I, I, I felt like it was worth having uh, to be very, you know, you know, candid about where I think we are. I think we're, 
I think we have talent. I think we're tough. I think we've shown everybody that we're going to be a very physical football team and we're highly capable. Now we have to play with a lot greater level of consistency. And we need to, you know, this has got nothing to do with anybody or anything. We just need to, you know, we got to stay a little healthier. We've seen, we got a lot of guys going down in the course of a game. It's really affected us on special teams again now. We're down numbers big time. In that game, we were really down numbers. It got to the point where we were having a hard time getting the right people in the right places. And hopefully we can, you know, that's not going to continue. If that, can, that trend continues, that's going to be a problem now. Uh, so we've got to we got to hope that we can kind of get healthy. So I've got to adjust our practice schedule, quite frankly, to reflect that. And what's the scary part of that? Are you really ready to fire at a high enough level? You know, because you're not. You know, but that's where we are now. That happens in a lot of places this time of year, and we've got to weather that. But right now, boy, I don't know how many guys went down in that game. You know, but a lot of guys went down in that game. I, I, how serious was it and all that it remains to be seen. But Stop shuffling the checkers around. It's, 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 it, that's problematic. You had been running the ball well. Um, yes. You took a step back last week. You also had some offensive linemen yep. bouncing in and out. Uh -huh. Is that primary focus this week? Because you know, as you mentioned before, I mean, that's really safeties in the box. They're going to yep. try and make it hard. Yeah. One thing we've done a great job of, not one thing, we've done a good job of a lot of things, but we were. Todd, you know, we threw for over 279 yards, and he was 64% efficient. Those numbers are pretty damn good. We're throwing the ball well on first and second down in play action and at times on third down. Now, our third down uh, numbers didn't look as good because we were off schedule a fair amount because of we're not running the ball well enough. But Toddy's playing at a pretty high level. We're quite confident now. You know, load the box. I mean, we're going to send the ball down the field now. That will not change. So they're going to give us opportunities to throw the ball, and we're going to take them. Uh, but – you still have to be able to run the football. Loaded box or no loaded box, you've got to be able to run the ball. And we're highly capable of doing that. And we've seen loaded boxes all year long. We didn't run it well. Um, and, you know, I would say, honestly, a lot of mistakes were occurring in the run game just in terms of missed assignments and things like that. And, you know, we got to get that fixed. That's, that's, that's our job. You know, why, why so many? And I, I told you when I, one of the problems I think there is. But we got to overcome that. You spoke at the beginning here. You got confidence inside him because you were confident that he was going to progress the way you wanted to. Has he progressed maybe even more or quicker than you even thought he, he would have? He's doing a great job. There's a lot of room for him to improve right now. But he's doing a great job. He is improving at a great rate. I like where he's headed right now, you know. And in addition to what we talked about a second ago, one thing you notice with us is we're a big drive team. Bum, 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 bum. You know, like, ch you know, chunks here and there, but like we're like 12 and 13 and 14 play drive, 7 and 10. We don't get a lot of those hit a play and go the distance on for us. That hasn't happened a lot this year. And you don't, haven't seen that in the run game. I'm pretty accustomed to whether it be play action pass or runs in any given game, a couple of three – what you'd call home run balls, or you throw a crossing route, turns into 60 for I, I, You know, I'm trying to remember, was the last time I really seen that? We had one available to us at Utah State we didn't connect on, but like, you know, maybe Ty McCullough and one of the games a few games ago. But we've become a very, if you notice, you say, well, that's a good thing, keeps the defense off. Sure. But that's why sometimes by the time we get down there, we're a little bit fatigued, you know. Um, I'd like to see us be able to – we are – our explosive plays are at an all-time high, but they're not home run balls. They're explosive by definition, meaning 16-yard throw, 12-yard run. But home run balls, how many have you seen, whether they be runs or pass? You haven't seen many. Yeah, okay. Well, there you go. You got the number hand. Yeah. Yeah. We're, and how about the runs? Okay. And I'm not used to that. We got to reestablish that 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 should be in that that those those should be in there, and and so have some ability to strike without having to be in these extended drives all the time. Nothing against extended drives; they've got some great, wonderful things to them. Keep your defense off the field, but you know I'd like to see us get some more home run balls, and we're paying attention to that closely right now. You know where are they? How do we get them? How do we get more of them? We're capable, but we're not firing at those. Now, this has been a good football conversation, you know. I don't know who's on the screen, but certainly the three of us here, uh, you know, I mean, it's a good conversation, but that, that's kind of some insight into, you know, 
what we're talking about, what we're looking at, and uh, what we're up against, so to speak. Yeah, he's done a good job, um, and he does have a pretty good demeanor. Um, I just think Toddy is playing a lot of football right now. He hadn't played a lot of football. He's starting to play a lot of football. I mean, you know, a lot was said of his one game last year, and he hadn't played a lot of football prior to that. And, you know, then he spotted and he showed up in a game a couple, you know. but all, And then we started the season. And but I think what you're seeing right now is a guy that's starting to play, you know, more football. <laughs> getting better you know and, and and that usually is the case with guys that have ability and work at it hard and and of course I really think that John Budmeyer's done a great great job with him I just I think if you asked Hottie he said that coach Budmeyer makes the game easier makes it simpler that's the goal when you're coaching don't make it harder make it simpler and I think that has happened um, you know we need more consistency there there are plays that aren't seen there that are available to us that we're not connecting on that aren't showing up necessarily everybody sees that so I think you know um, I think there's a lot of room to grow and develop for him as well and for everybody for all of us you know we need to become more efficient in the throw game in terms of the detail of our routes and being right where we're supposed to be at all times and we need to be more efficient in terms of our blocking schemes on being more assignment sound um, and, and, and I think I said this before, I'm going to say it again. We're going to pop. We're going to, we're going to have a game where we really pop. And you've seen it now, like even against a team like Boise, there probably should have been 12 more points at the half, which would have been enough to outpoint them. But in addition to that, who knows what that would have momentum into. And that's what we haven't seen. We saw this explosion against Vanderbilt, even more so at the half, but then, you know, We've had a variety of different styles of games, but there's been things where even even the Utah State game, we should have exploded in that game. Now, of all the games, that's the one to me where we had some real strike capability in there that there was real plays to be made that would have just, boom, blew that thing open. And we've got to get there. That's got to happen. When we become that team, um, that, you know, that, that's going to be exciting. And we will become that team. That'll happen. That'll happen. Well, Craig and I, you know, we, we, we're, we're, we're in a heated battle in a rivalry game. But off the field, I think, you know, I really like Craig a lot. And I think we see the game through a very similar set of eyes. And, um, you know, having played against him now, um, I have a great, as I said earlier, I really have a great deal of respect for the way he's built his program and the foundation of his program and his philosophies. I think they've done a remarkable job of identifying prospects and developing their players. Um, and I think he's, I'll say this too, that guy's done an awful lot of good for college football. He's involved in a lot of the committees that have a lot of uh, important decisions to be made. So I really appreciate what he has done for college football. You know, he and I have talked about our ability as guys that have been around this game a while to make it better for the next generation, if you will. And um, he's just really done a phenomenal job of that. So I appreciate that as well. Um, so I've got a great deal of respect for him and his program and his coaching staff. And this isn't like a kumbaya love affair. This is just being honest with you and telling you what I really think. That's what I think, you know. But I also think this, okay, that's a bitter rival game for CSU. And we're going to go into this game, and all that things I said are really wonderful and glowing. But we're going into this game with one mindset. We're going to be in a street fight, and we got to go up there and win the street fight. And there'll be no kumbayas in this game. This is a, a, not, a, not, it's a, not a good feeling game. This is a go after each other and, 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 and fight it out to the final whistle. Number 
recruiting and developing. In a lot of ways, that kind of the goal or the blueprint for what you want the program to be here at CSU. Yeah. I think I look at it and I say to myself, okay, Coach Lubick came in here and Coach Lubick really did a great job of recruiting Colorado and finding the diamonds and the gems in the state of Colorado and keeping them here. And then I watch, uh, you know, Craig Bowl, and, I mean, it, it blows my circuits that they've got to fly people into Denver and drive them right past Fort Collins to go all the way to wherever the heck they've gone. And I don't, I've never been there, but, I, I, you know, I don't know what that's like, right? It seems like it's like another part of the world. So um, in order to do that, that impresses me. Like, they can go find talent and project it and then recruit it, you know, and – Coach Lubick did that here. Of course, he didn't have to drive by Fort Collins, just to Fort Collins. So to me, those guys have, have, have figured that out, and, 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 and that's what we're trying to do is find the really good players. It doesn't mean you're not going to recruit around the country. It doesn't mean that, but we've got to have a tremendous focus in our backyard and don't get seduced by all the other nonsense that you can get seduced by in recruiting. And I look at my short stint here, and it's not been very long, and COVID and everything else, but we have brought in some really talented guys from Colorado. I mean, I, I, if I try to name them all right now, I'll, I'll, I'll miss some names, but we've got a bunch of guys that are playing on the field or about ready to play on this football field that I think will not only be good players, I think they might be great players. And that's the key. I mean, that, that, that's what we need to do. You see them on the field. They're all out there. I don't know whether, you know, whether you're talking about Henry Blackburn, Jack Howe, 